Welcome to Cascade Land Conservancy's annual awards breakfast. Our awards honor people and organizations which have made outstanding achievements in conservation and community building. Here are this year's winners. The John Stanford Educational Achievement Award goes to Friends of the Cedar River Watershed for the Watershed Report. This is the environment, ecology. Then we have the social spectrum. And along with that, we have the economic spectrum. Right here in the middle, where they all meet, this is sustainability. Today, we say let's put a curb cut in on purpose and let the water go in here, not to a high place, but to a low place. What do we call this thing? These students are recognizing that not only do they care about this concept of sustainability, but they care about it in a way that means that they can impact their own future. What do you know about that building up there? The solar panels up there, they're like, there's like three to If you introduce something like green infrastructure or water conservation to a young person, they look at it like, well, who, who wouldn't do that? The Watershed Report is a series of short videos made to show the sustainability in schools, cities, and just around the Puget Sound in general. The most important part, and I think our biggest goal, is just getting the information out there and encouraging other people to do what works. To instill that sense of, yes, we can do this, and it, it actually isn't that difficult. Hi, my name is Michaela. I'm a senior at Nathan Hale High School. We don't have enough people understanding A, what the problems are, and B, what the solutions are. The Watershed Report was helping us learn about the watershed and then share that with all the different people of the communities. As they recognize their own empowerment, they step forward and they address leaders in the community, even as youth. And they'll say, boy, can we look at this differently? Could we bring in a project or a program that would reduce waste or improve transportation or help clean up water? These students are starting their future. They're tomorrow's voters, and they are tomorrow's decision makers, and they are tomorrow's leaders. This is where I live. This is our home. And this is what we have to use to live. Life is water. Water is life. <laughs> the Community Service Award goes to the Veterans Conservation Corps for providing training and volunteer opportunities to veterans to restore and protect Washington State's natural resources. A lot of them, uh, like myself, are uh, Iraq, Afghanistan veterans. With the set of problems that we've kind of inherited from military service, it's just a way to occupy your mind, keep your mind off those events or memories or symptoms that you might have and just connect with the, the environment. In military terms, finding a new mission. We're going to bring some of that over here. So eventually I'd like to, to keep that area. The Veteran Conservation Corps was built out of this horticulture therapy, essentially is what it is. You're, you're taking a piece of property that's that's been just neglected, taken over by invasive weeds, which is what this farm was, and uh, you're actually turning it into something healthy and useful, not just for us, but for the environment. Last year, uh, we, we made contact with about 3,000 veterans throughout the state, and a thousand of those, uh, roughly, um, came out on a regular basis for uh, various different types of volunteer projects. For some of us, it's a great way to rehabilitate. Cascade Land Conservancy has been a huge supporter of the Veterans Conservation Corps, and that was something that we really appreciate. This is separated for the raised bed section. In the military, everybody has a job to do, and uh, if there's something that needs to be done, you know what your mission is, and you come together and make it happen. Even though we're years out of, the, out of the service, we, st we still have that bond, and it will be that way, I imagine, till the day I die. The Innovative Conservation Project Award goes to the Washington State Department of Transportation for the I-90 Wildlife Bridges Project. Interstate 90 is a major mountain pass for us in Washington State. It is truly the link for the critical freight movement of the agriculture and manufactured goods to get to the ports of Seattle and Tacoma. For us, building a major interstate 
through such a sensitive environmental setting. Knowing that we have major wildlife crossings was an opportunity for us to get the right people at the table early and have the conversation about the best way to proceed on a project of this size. So whether we're talking about grizzly bears and wolves or we're talking about uh, small animals or reptiles that have a need for connectivity in their wildlife habitat, I-90 uh, provides a real barrier. So these wildlife bridges are going to provide that connectivity to ensure that we have security for those wildlife species into the future. As part of this conservation effort in preserving this north-south corridor, we actually had to mitigate off-site this was a unique partnership we had with the Cascade Land Conservancy to actually go out and purchase uh, mitigation property together. It's an issue of safety. It's a safety for both the traveling public and the safety of the animals that try to cross this corridor. The partnerships that are necessary to make this come off and come off well is so important. This project was an opportunity to work with Cascade Land Conservancy on the Cascade Agenda to provide some mitigation areas that connect to the Alpine wilderness. And those things now provide a context for our major interstate freeway to come through and improve the environment, leave it better than when we came, and have a win-win solution for all of us. The New Directions for Livable Communities Award goes to McCarver Elementary School for the Xena Linux Project. One of our students, Xena Linux, was abducted from her back alley and subsequently murdered. We knew that we needed to do something to make a difference in this community and to create spaces for kids. Because at that point, children were afraid, families were afraid, and everybody felt victimized by the incident. A parent came up with the idea of taking McCarver Park and creating it into a beautiful space. We wanted this to be the most special place that it could be. this, we've also not only built the park, but we've started the garden project. They've also created two garden beds for food kitchens in the community. And there's also a bed for families who don't have money to come and, and grow their own food as well. It helps the garden. Yeah, and it's an earthworm. When it poops. Ew! Ew, you're touching that thing! They had absolutely no idea about composting and their excitement about taking waste that would otherwise go into the garbage and turning it into something as beautiful as nutrients for their food has just been so exciting for them. So this really is part of the culture of McCarver now. Out of a devastating tragedy, this has become amazing. And I think it's just the beginning, just the beginning of what is to come. I told my husband, I don't want to move. I love my community. I love where I am. And from where the hilltop has come, it has gotten so much better. This community needed a boost. And they made a boost themselves. It didn't come from anybody else. It came from everybody right here.